continuing on with our discussion of the costs of financing, let's talk about equity, right? There's really two ways that companies can raise equity. The one that we think of normally is they're going to issue new common stock. And we can use a variety of methods to calculate that. But additionally, and we never really think of it this way, but when a company has profits, those profits belong to the owners. If the company pays them dividends from those earnings, that money obviously goes to the shareholders, but then they kept some of the shareholders' profits. They kept some of their money. This is retained earnings. So retained earnings are a source of financing. Sometimes this is referred to as internally generated capital. So by reinvesting earnings, that again is a source of gathering funds from investors in the form of equity. So why is there a cost for this reinvested earnings? Essentially, it's an opportunity cost, right? Um, we, we could have paid everything out to the shareholders, and then they could decide what to do with their money. They could buy these securities from this company, or they could buy from another company. So again, this opportunity cost is, is real, but it really doesn't cost the company anything, right? So uh, the reason for this is to reflect this opportunity uh, for uh, gathering funds for the company. So there are three basic ways we can calculate this cost of equity, cost of using um, retained earnings. We can use the capital asset pricing model from a previous video. Again, that's the risk-free rate of return plus beta multiplied by some uh, market risk premium. We could also use a discounted cash flow model. This again comes from a previous video where we take next year's dividend divided by the current price, and then add to that the capital gains growth or the growth that we associate with dividends um, to, the, uh, to that quotient to get the return, in this case, the cost of retained earnings. Or, and again, this is very subjective, but we could use the yield to maturity on our current debt and then add to that a risk premium for bonds. Now, this is a judgmental risk premium. So, um, again, uh, we may have some inkling, right, some, some uh, feeling about what that, what that premium might be, right? What has been the usual uh, difference in return between the return on stocks and the return on our bonds. So we could come up with, again, that number. So let's review some of these, right? So we have the, the CAPM model. In this case, we have a risk-free rate of 5.6%. The risk premium uh, on the market is 6. And again, beta is 1.2. Again, what numbers do we want to use? We're typically going to use a longer-term bond 10, 20, maybe 30 years. Um, we typically use a, as the market risk premium somewhere between three and a half to 6%. Um, and then of course, we're gonna use some estimate of beta in recognizing as we've talked about before, that there are, you know, beta is not uh, totally stable. Um, there's a pretty wide confidence interval of what that number might actually be. Um, but again, this is our forecast for the capital asset pricing model. The dividend growth model, again, we have our beginning dividends are, is $3.26. Growth of dividends that we estimate uh, off into the future, 5.8%. 
and the price is $50. So in this case, we end up with 12.7 is the uh, approximation, uh, rounded off here, of our uh, dividend cost of equity. And then, again, thinking about this, how do you estimate this growth rate? Again, we could use historical growth rate if we think it's going to go in the future. Sometimes we might be able to get some uh, information from Value Line, Zacks, Yahoo Finance. Um, we could also use what we refer to as the earnings retention model. We use this in another video. So in this case, we say, look, the company's been getting around a 15% uh, uh, on its uh, return on equity. They pay out about 62% of its earnings. Um, so again, using this earnings retention model, we can estimate the future growth rate. Again, our formula here says that our future growth rate, uh, we estimate to be about 5.7%. Now, this number could be way off from our historical number. So again, we have to use some judgment when we're looking at these and uh, use a little bit of common sense when you think about the number itself. So when we have this uh, judgmental approach, right, the bond yield, we found out that our before tax debt was around 9.8%, add 3.2, again, I averaged up to about 10 here, so that's about 13.2%. Now this risk premium is not the CAPM equity risk premium, right? It's hopefully gonna give us a ballpark estimate of what the historical relationship has been between the returns that our investors get when they buy our bonds and the returns that investors get when they uh, buy our stocks. So when we get these three values, we can average them together, gives us this 12.89%. And again, as you see, as we complete our table here, we end up with our uh, completed combination here, 12.89%. Now, you might need to do a calculation here to put in the cost. So you can either use this number, 9.8, plus the uh, risk premium that you state is 3.2, or you could type in a number here as what you think the cost of debt might be, and again, do the formula here where it's the cost of debt plus the risk cream. So there's you have some options on how to do that. But the formula, the after tax, is the average of whatever those numbers are that you utilize. So when a company issues new common stock, right, they may have to pay flotation costs to the underwriter. It's not free to issue stock. So when we look at new common stock, we may have to adjust this. When companies issue new common stock, we may talk about this in later videos, the public may see this as a negative signal and they, that itself might depress the stock a little bit. In addition, companies might choose to underprice their stock to encourage investors to buy this issue, right, this new issue, rather than the old seasoned issue that's already in the marketplace. So the costs, these flotation costs, might be quite large for new common stock issues. So again, what I've estimated here is a 5% cost. So again, if we look here, here's our flotation cost. I say it's 5% of 50 bucks, so that's $2.50. So you see our cost of new equity is 13.06%. Now here, as we've completed this, we have our four costs. The after-tax cost of debt is 7.49%, 9% for preferred stock. The average cost of our retained earnings is around 12.89%. And the common equity cost, new issue, is 13.06%.
So moving forward now, we need to talk, how do we use these numbers? How are they utilized in trying to determine what assets we want to purchase? We, we, we're going to, these are the costs. How do we utilize it? So the next part, we're going to talk about these market values and how we've chosen to finance our company. See you in the next video.